The next song of the night will be Step by Step, number 15. Oh, God, you are. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to come here and worship you together, God, and thank you for everything you give us and letting us assemble here, God, and please help us come closer to you, God, and in Jesus' name we pray, amen. It's truly a blessing to see everyone here today. I don't know if you've seen uh, whether TV shows or things like that when someone is about to speak and they're really nervous and the coach or the teacher tells them to do so, to imagine something while they're speaking about the audience. You guys know what I'm talking about? I don't want to say it, but you guys know what I'm talking about, right? I can't even imagine what it would be to be John having to stand up here and lead singing because I think that's even more scary than speaking. You know, no matter how much, how bad your voice is when you're speaking, as long as what you have to say is any good, they'll listen to you. But I'm glad that John has the talent and he has the ability and he has the willingness to come and lead us in song in here today. Amen? I want to ask you a question to kind of start off and I'm going to lay kind of the groundwork for this evening. Who is it that God has placed in your life that has helped shape you into who you are as a Christian? Or maybe it was a particular event that you went to. Maybe it was a, uh, a, um, a youth event or maybe it was a jamboree or something like that or a gospel meeting that you heard somebody or you were part of some event that made such, it was so powerful and it made such a big impact on you that it shaped the way you think spiritually or it shaped the way you do things as a Christian. Or it could be a situation or an experience that you went through that really helped shape you in who you are. See, that's what I, I kind of want to talk about is our theme this is today is things people or, or situations 
that God puts in our life to help shape us into who he, want, into who he wants us to be. We're going to be sharing some of those stories with you today. But uh, before we get started, I want to share mine. Before I even knew that I wanted to be a minister, there was a person that God placed in my life. And through my relationship with him and through his, um, really, um, discipleship of me that has helped me be who I am today as a minister. And he didn't even know that, and I didn't even know that, but God did. His name was Doug Pace. And Doug was the first youth minister that was, uh, was full-time youth minister at the church I grew up at, Middlebrook Church of Christ. And I, just gotten, I had recently gotten baptized, and they, within the next year or so, hired Doug. And that was an incredible thing for us, to have someone that was totally dedicated to teach us, to mentor us, to uh, help us know God better. And uh, it was during the summer, so I didn't have anything better to do. So Doug would pick me up, and he, we would do church together throughout uh, many, many days during the summer. And we would go do visitation. And it was, visitation was a huge thing for Doug, and it is for me even till this day. So I do a ton of visitations. I love the blessing that I get out of connecting with people, whether in their homes, whether through lunch, or whether in the hospital, or in some way of connecting with our members to know, get to know them better, to help them even grow closer to God. And Doug taught me something that 30, 30 years later, I still think is one of the cornerstones of what I do, is that people don't know how much you care until, I mean, people don't know what people don't, yeah, what, people don't, thank you, there you go. Oh, I, I am not, you're right. Um, people don't care how much you know unless they know how much you care about them. And that has stuck with me through all the years, and I've, I've pretty much kind of based one of the cornerstones of my ministry in that. And uh, I want to I share Titus chapter 2 with you, verses uh, 1 through 7. And here's another big thing. You've got Paul, who, really, who, uh, who brought Titus in, into relationship with God. And now Titus is working with a church in Crete, and Paul is doing what? He is shaping and mentoring Titus on how to work with the church in Crete. And he writes to Titus and he says, You, however, must teach what is appropriate to sound doctrine. Teach the older men to be temperate, worthy of respect, self-control, and sound in faith, in love, and endurance. Likewise, teach the older women to be reverent in the way they live, not to be slanderers or addicted to too much wine, but to teach them what is good. And here it is, what the, here's the, uh, some more shaping that goes on. Then they can urge the younger women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled and pure, to be busy at home, to be kind, and to be subject to their husbands, so that no one will be maligned, no one will malign the word of God. Similarly, encourage the young men to be self-controlled in everything, set them an example by doing what is good. See, God set up this system about shaping us into who he wants us to be by putting people in our lives to do that. And he did that throughout the Bible. And uh, you're going to hear stories about events and about situations and about people that have helped shape us, me, helped shape them into who they are on a spiritual level, how they see God even but before they get up here, I want you to know that when I, when I came to them and I proposed the idea of, hey, why don't we do a youth-led service? Let's say that they were not really enthusiastic about that. Because none of these guys are really upfront people. They are amazing young men, but that's not where they are comfortable, is being upfront. So I encouraged them to step out of their comfort zone and to share about some things that God is doing in their lives, and that's what they're going to do for you today. They are very nervous. They're, they're out of their comfort zone, and they don't know how it's going to sound. But I tell you what, God's going to anoint them, 
and God's going to bless them, and he's going to speak through them in just a little bit because they are doing this for God. The next song of the night will be number two. Oh, well, I guess number one. We praise thee, O God. We praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now God above. Hallelujah, thank the glory, hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thank the glory, revive us again. We praise thee. So if you don't know me, I'm Alex Day, and I'm 17 years old, and I'm a junior at Hebron High School. So when Hi talked to us about doing a youth-led worship, uh, one of the first things that popped into mind was Trek. And Trek, if you don't know what that is, every year the high schoolers take a 12-hour bus ride down to Slide of Colorado, where we spend a week hiking up a mountain. And if you don't know, if you've never experienced that, it is a very challenging task. It is both mentally, spiritually, and physically challenging. And one of the things that I've realized throughout my experience doing Trek is that you can't be afraid to ask God for help. Now, that was really shown to me my first year Trek. Me being my young self and very fit, I thought that I was going to own that mountain, that I was going to be no problem. Well, I'd say within the first 10 minutes of that, uh, my back was hurting, my legs were dead, basically, and I wanted to quit. And I learned very quickly that you couldn't be afraid to ask God for help. And throughout that trip, you can ask God for about anything because it's a very challenging thing. And that could be from doing rappel, hiking in general, or just asking for patience because we go to all sorts of paces. It could be fast, slow, and sometimes that could be frustrating because you may want to get somewhere faster than others. Some people may want to take their time. And that's one of the things that I'd struggle with too was just that realizing that I need to ask God for patience, that I need to be there to support other people. And that's one of the main things I've learned is that you can't be afraid to ask God for help throughout this. And that's one of the things I've tried to apply in my life, too. And that could be anywhere from just asking help on a test or going out and meeting a new friend or finding something good to do in the world. And now, Trek may, just from that, may seem like a very painful experience. But in the end, it pays off very well. And one of those things is the view there. 
Now, if you live in Carrollton, the closest thing we have to a mountain is probably the Carrollton landfill. And <laughs> let me tell you, I've been to the top of that, and the view is not very great, and there are some crazy smells up there. <laughs> but uh, when you, throughout climbing up the mountain, you experience a whole new view than Carrollton. You experience a whole new different part of God's creation. And that's one of the things that have moved me quite a lot and has made me want to go to Trek every single year. It's just experiencing that view and realizing how powerful our God really is. And the fact that with the snap of his finger, he could create a place such so beautiful as that. It's just a very, it's a mouth-dropping experience. And it just moves everyone there. And just it just has moved me, too, to want to learn more and learn what my God can really do. And Trek has just, it's helped many people here, not just me. It's helped us grow both spiritually, physically, and mentally. And we've all learned, we've all experienced crazy stories from it. And we've also, of course, have grown closer to God in faith just because of that experience and realizing that you get to experience something that not many people in this world get to do. And you both get to realize that God's there and you really do need his help. Thank you. song of the night will be number 718, We Shall Assemble. We shall assemble on the mountain. We shall assemble at the to top that, but I will. Uh, 
Good evening. Uh, my name's William, and I'm a sophomore in the youth group. And y'all probably know me. I'm a kind of a stud around here. But tonight, I would like to talk a little, about, a little bit about service and what it means to me and how it has impacted me. Uh, last fall, myself and a couple others, other families in the group, mission group, uh, had the privilege of going down to Beaumont, Texas to help out with the flood relief down there. And on the last day of the trip, it was a Sunday. We went in one weekend. Uh, my crew had just finished working on a house, helping tear out the floorboards, uh, I think knock down some walls and wheelbarrow it all, all the way down to the street. And after that, not gonna lie, I was pretty tired, but uh, we were heading back. And I remember sitting, sitting in the front seat, just ready to get back to my bed and just lay there. And our driver pulled, pulled on over to the side of the road and I heard him talking on the, on the phone. And I was sitting there in the front seat just thinking, and I was kind of eavesdropping. And he, he said uh, he said something like, yeah, we can do it. We'll be there in a sec. And I was like, no, <laughs> let's, like, I, hope, I was really hoping he was talking about the church, like, because I did not want to go anywhere else. And then, so we ended up going to another location where it turns out everyone else was, just about the rest of our group that went. And they were all there. And when we showed up, uh, we began helping this older gentleman who he had injured his arm while repairing his own house and he had like a torn ligament or a tendon in his arm so he couldn't really do it by himself and so we began helping him, helping him out and when when we got there then people started like packing up and they were leaving and because we had kind of finished and we had gotten there late and not gonna lie, I was one of the first people ready to go. But then Alex walked over to me and he said something like, we can't leave, like, we have to stay. I was like, no, we don't. But then he convinced me and then he walks over to High and tells him that, you know, we need to stay, we need to kind of finish a little longer, just like one more hour of work or something. And so High agreed to that. And I was, as I was working, to my, working, I was thinking to myself, uh, there's a repeating theme every time we serve someone and that is there's no sacrifice without serv there's no service without sacrifice it says here in mark 10 verse 45 for even the son of man did not come to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many and although we might not think that our sacrifice is as great as dying on the cross like jesus did you may just be giving up a little bit of money a little bit of your time but to, but to the people you serve the community you serve and most importantly importantly to God himself, it means everything. See, because when we sacrifice for others with a loving heart, not reluctant, it has the power to move mountains. That's the biggest way serving has impacted me, my life. Not the service itself or the people I serve, but the sacrifice I'm willing to make for someone else. Thank you. The next song of the night is number 47, Holy, Holy, Holy. Oh.
next song of the night will be I Will Call Upon the Lord, number 623. I will call upon the Lord. sophomore at Hebron and just like Alex I will be talking about track and said a different aspect of it more specific which is solo day um, Alex gave a great explanation of what track is like and just to reiterate it's essentially a five-day hiking trip and the first two days being mainly hiking but the third is a rest day just to let your body accl acclimate to the altitude and to be able to rest your legs and stuff and but on this day, we also have a time called solo time. And it lasts for three hours, maybe nine to noon. We don't really have clocks up there. And I mean, I can't really sit still for like five minutes and they expect you to for like three hours. And so that was, when I first heard that, I was like, they're messing with you. Like, you don't actually have to do that. There's no way. And so, but essentially you just go off that you eat breakfast then you go off and you just find a quiet place maybe by a river like on a rock and you just kind of sit there and it's a time for you to be with yourself and god and just focus on him and so you can do this by singing praying reading your bible um or just looking at his vast creation and i have a verse of the, for that he says in psalm 46 verse 10 be still and know that i am god I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. And then again in Exodus 14, 14, the Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. These two verses kind of sum up how I spent my solo time. Um, I just kind of sat there and just like looked at like all the creation, what he has to offer. And the main point that I kind of took away from that is um, if you make God your first priority, everything will, everything else will just fall in line. And it's all about how you perceive things. Um, he just has a way of rewarding you. Um, yet the most shocking thing about solo time is that that three hours felt like more of three minutes. It just flew by. And I felt myself kind of craving more of it because it was really just peaceful. And um, somehow I think that that's what God kind of called us to do is to let us just take a step back, look at, analyze our lives, and just like be able to focus on him more. But funny moment from that was, so the, you kind of, the logistics of it, you kind of, you want to find a spot that's within shouting distance of everyone else. It's unlike Alex. I mean, I remember seeing him, there's a ridge with some snow on it, and he's just chucking rocks and just climbing all the way to the top. I was like, look at him go. He's trying to get there. I, I was so proud of him. He almost got there. <laughs> and let me see. 
once again, just to reiterate, um, God called us to have a constant need and want for him. And that was probably how I grew and learned from that experience. Was able. That's how I kind of shape my life now. And I don't want to pull a high and waste too much of t your time. So I'm done. Thank you. So the next song of the night will be number 71, As the Deer. As the deer pants
I really prefer a lower bar to be set so it's easier to jump over. But um, So I'm going to talk about Nicaragua and our experience on our mission trip last year. Uh, Grant was talking about being still and just knowing that God is going to take care of things. And one of the things that I really struggle with is having peace in my relationship with God. And the two places that really I would go back to for that are Trek and to Nicaragua. Because those people have so many problems just financially in all their circumstances. And they are the happiest people that I've ever been around. They're so loving with all their things, just generous to everybody. And the perfect example of that are the workers for Mission Fire Cristo. They have nothing, but they come to work every day with a smile on their face, ready to help everybody else. And you never really hear about their problems. Like Carlos was one of them, and he had a serious illness and really just didn't talk about it ever. And we didn't hear about it until we were actually building a house for him after he had gotten over it. So just going there reminds me of how, y'all hear that? Okay. But going there reminds me of just how much that we do have regardless of our circumstances and how happy we need to be and knowing that God is there to comfort us and always be there. I'll try not to waste any more of your time there. <laughs> They're getting me back because they always say I never end on time when it comes to Bible class. I'm always like 10 minutes over. Who said that? <laughs> All right, boys, I want to thank you so much for stepping out of your comfort zone and share some things that are from your heart, share what God is doing and what God is teaching you through the things that we experience together. And uh, he, they have talked a lot about some of the activities or some of the, uh, some of the youth events that we, um, that we have participated in. And um, these... These activities are, re are, are set up to help them encounter God. Trek is not just a backpacking trip. If, you, if you've ever been on one of the wilderness treks that Webb Chapel has been a part of for many, many years, long before I came, and since we've been doing it, since we've been here, it is an encounter with God. We use the mountain to do that. But every single thing that we do is to help us encounter God, help us reevaluate our relationship with him, help us to really think about where we are and where we want to be in our relationship with him. Our mission trip was made to do the same thing. We went down there seeking to help people. We came back being blessed by the people, the very people that we came to seek and help. And... Uh, we had four families that decided to go, so they made it. Uh, we, it became a youth family mission trip, and every one of them will tell you it was one of the greatest blessings that we had back last year. And when God gave us the opportunity for Beaumont and to go to Beaumont, it was an incredible trip. Um, I'm going to share this with y'all. You guys may not know who didn't go, but when we got to that house that we talked about where everyone birched together, I did not want to be there. I wanted to go and I wanted to rest because we had just gotten through with a huge long day of work. We started out with a house that before you, it had walls and by the time we got done with it, we could see right through the house. So it was a long work already. But when we got there, I was ready to go. In fact, when I saw how much work it was going to take and it'd be already 4 o'clock, I said, let's call it a day. But it was our teenagers who said we needed to stay and help this man because he can't do it for themselves. The, that's the kind of youth group that we have. They, I can give you so many more stories about God shaping them through the things that, that we are a part of and the people that we have been a part of, but I will 
I, I won't waste your time much longer. <laughs> we, uh, I am so glad that God set up a way that he says, in order for you to grow into the, 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 the person that I want you to be, the person that is most effective for me, I am going to put people in your lives. I'm going to put situations in your life. And I'm going, to be, I'm going to allow you to be a part of things that will help grow your relationship with God and help shape you into who I want you to be. I know each and every one of you in here either has had or, or have those people in your life right now, whether you're 15 to 17 like them or 55 to 70 years old. God is constantly shaping us, amen? And he constantly is putting people in our life to help mold us into who he wants us to be. Are we ever a finished product? We're not, are we? The day that we die, we are still an unfinished product for God. But he is constantly working on us to do that. Well, you've heard today about how God is shaping them through understanding that I can't do this on my own through understanding that I need, if I put God first, my priorities will line up with everything else. And I need to, I need to be able to know that I, can, I need to spend time with God. I need to crave him like I crave the very breath that I breathe. And then understanding about contentment. Oh, my gosh, that's a huge lesson, isn't it? Understanding that the things that God blesses with and the people who God puts in our life to bless us is what we need to be thanking for and rather than looking to what we don't have versus what God has blessed us with. That's an amazing lesson. Well, those are amazing lessons that we can learn every single day. doesn't matter how old we are, right? I want to, in a little bit, we're going to sing an invitation song. I don't know where you are in your journey with God shaping you, but I do know that he is constantly doing that. And maybe you have uh, kind of left his shaping for a little while, and you've heard something today that calls you back. It says, into God's shaping again. Please come up when we sing. Maybe it's the fact that you have been shaping by God right now, and you are going through something tough, and God is shaping you for to be even a stronger person, and you need to come and ask for the prayers and, and the support and the encouragement of your church family. You need to do that. Or maybe you have never responded to the gospel call, to God's calling you. My, my uh, daughter Tamaya did that today. She responded to God calling her. God has shaped her through the many, many people uh, that have been a part of her life. And uh, she responded. One of those people uh, that I forgot to mention is my wife, Valerie. For the last eight years, or seven or eight years, Valerie has spent much of her time shaping and molding our children to know God and to love God better. See, God puts people in places where he wants them to be to do the things he wants them to do. And, man, I am so glad that he does that because I could not do it for myself. You can't either. So as we stand and we sing this invitation song, if there's a prayer, if there's a need, if there's anything that we can do to serve you, to be more who God wants you to be, please come up and uh, come up as we sing.
tonight. In 1998, I went on my very first mission trip. I went to the island of Dominica, and what we were doing was knocking doors and setting up uh, one-on-one Bible studies. We had been training for that for months, and our minister was leading the trip, and he, he placed me with one of our elders. His name was R.C. Green. And so we had been out knocking doors all day to no avail, and finally we get a lady that wants to study with us. And we sit down, R.C. has his Bible, I have my Bible, and he says, okay, son, lead us in the Bible study. I thought he was going to lead the Bible study. I didn't know. But it was that experience that helped me to be able to do what I can do today. I think we've seen a little bit of that here tonight. I think we have seen some young guys take uh, a step out in faith tonight uh, in, in a loving environment, and I, I think they did a wonderful job. I'm really impressed, and uh, I, I really want to publicly thank High. High has really worked hard with these guys this last week or two, getting them ready, and uh, he had a, over his home the other night, cooked him a, a good hamburger supper, and really uh, made, made this a comfortable thing for them, so we're thankful for that. The Lord's Supper has been left prepared, and it's in the library. If you need to partake of that, you can exit at this time. Uh, Thank you all, once again, for being here tonight. Thank you for blessing us with your presence. Uh, We're going to have a closing prayer at this time, and uh, I'm going to ask these young guys to stay up here, and y'all come talk to these fellows. They have a lot more to tell you than what they told you up here. They've got got some good things to share, uh, but I'd like for y'all to come and visit with them. Let's go to God in our in prayer. Father, I thank you so much for the legacy of faith. Father, I thank you for the ability to, to hand the reins over from time to time and to see what our young men have to offer. And Father, I, I thank you for them. Father, I thank you for our young ladies, too, that, that do a great deal in this congregation that largely goes unrecognized. And we, Father, because it's behind the scenes, because it's quiet, uh, but they do a great work as well. And we're thankful for the moms and the dads that have made this possible. We thank you for High and his work with our youth, Father. Youth work is not for the faint of heart, and we have one of the bravest hearts I know working with our teens. Father, I thank you for your son, Jesus. I thank you for his ability to share uh, what needed to be shared when he was here and how he still works on our hearts today through the Spirit. Father, we love you, and we ask you to protect us as we leave this place. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.